right. Oh, it's record. All right. What's up? All right. So I'm going to do this uh, example problem on axial deformation and uh, it, on axial deformation. So some of you who are taking mechanics and materials or are interested in the subject, you'll know that here, this axial deformation stuff that involves, oh, I need more space. I should have thought about this, but it's all good. This delta is, you know, we had this, this form P of X for the internal axial force divided by E A X times dx okay and you don't have to write anything down because it's all on youtube man all right so here and then if if these things were constant so this is that basic equation for the axial deformation and this problem that we're going to look at uh like a piece of wood here this thing right here this piece of wood is embedded in like ground or something it's got a modulus of elasticity of 13.1 gigapascals that's the material property of this wood and then there's an axial force p of 20 kilonewtons applied here okay and then like a, a friction to the soil soil friction or whatever you embed there's some sort of friction and this is linearly distributed so that it's zero at the top here and then increases linearly so the intensity of each arrow is it grows that's why i drew the arrows getting bigger down the line here and this right here this is a linearly growing intensity if you will so this is kind of like a triangular distribution, but each of these arrows has a certain intensity, okay, associated with it. And at this point right here, this W is equal to three kilonewtons per meter, okay. And and the thing you have to find is essentially the the support reaction or the reaction force at the bottom right here, where it's embedded or at the anchor spot. And uh, um, and then the displacement. We want to know how much does it deform. From here, from this point right here, how far does it deform down? What's the deformation of this piece of wood? Okay, and so the first thing we're going to do is look at uh, solving for this reaction force. So reaction force F, okay, and you can fast forward through anything I write. But here, this reaction force F, and that's essentially just looking at this whole thing as a free body and summing the forces in the vertical direction. So summing the forces in the Y um, in the vertical equal to zero, and we'll say, which way should we say it's up, up or down? Up, you want to say up? Okay, so positive upwards, and so this would be, let's see, according to my drawing, and I think all of you can do this, is minus P, uh, which is equal to 20 kilonewtons, plus F, and here, the resultant of this linearly distributed load, okay, and we're going to assume that these, this friction on both sides accounts for just one, you know, this three kilonewtons per meter total, okay? But it's essentially the area of the triangle. So it's plus one half the base of this triangle, which would be the 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 kil three kilonewtons per meter times the height. Oh, and you need that information. And this height right here, this distance is two meters. Okay, and this problem right here is two meters. And so that is just one half W base times the height, so times two meters equal to zero and then we go through the number so here you solve for f f is equal to uh, 20 kilonewtons minus one half times w which is three kilonewtons per meter times two meters and we get that f is 17 kilonewtons done not too bad pretty easy okay so the next part here oh the, before i go down okay the next part is to is to determine okay the next part is to determine the displacement of the post so what we need here is we need to know to get to this dis to the displacement of this post we got to use this you know the axial deformation relationship that we derived okay earlier and here it, it's just uh, um, we need to know what the internal axial force is this p of x right here is the internal internal axial force okay the internal axial force and so here Really, what we want to do is determine the internal axial force. Is it different at the top or at the bottom? It's changing. It, yeah, it's changing, right? It's changing, right? So here we want the internal axial force, okay? But you know, there's it's like a um, it's like a shear and moment diagram. You know, it's like a triangular load. And anyways, you take a cut and you can find the function to describe it within this linearly varying load. So internal axial load here. All right, so. I'm going to make a cut here at a distance x, okay, at a distance x, and I'm going to find the internal axial force as a function of x, okay. So here, 
So let me redraw my free body diagram I've got here. Here's this my piece of timber. I've got this 20 kilonewtons here. Um, I've got my cut right here. I've got a linearly varying distributed axial load here that has a triangular function like this, and that's also been cut, okay? So I'm gonna call this Wx. This is the intensity of that, that load um, at, at a distance x. So here, and this location right here is x, okay? And when I draw here on the outside or the, on the inside of my cut, I'm gonna draw internally positive, right? So I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna call this n of x, okay? Oh, shoot. In this equation up here, you know, this, this internal axial force, I could call this N of X as well. Okay, it's the same thing right here. Okay, so this internal axial force, I've drawn it positive. I don't know if it's positive or negative. It could be, right? Okay. So let's see right here. So one thing I need to find out is what is this WX? Okay, so I, I can, you know, I can draw an equation of the line starting from this point and, and, you know, try to do that. Or I could just use similar triangles. Yeah, that similar triangles is, is kind of, it's powerful. It's hard. It's always hard to kind of come out with an equation of the line. You know, you got to kind of figure out where zero is and what drill slope. But, you know, whenever you see a triangle, it's like screaming, you know, similar triangle. So here, Wx over x is equal to three kilonewton per meter over two meters. Okay. And that would tell me that Wx is just uh, three halves kilonewton per meter squared. Uh, it's kind of a funny note but funny uh, unit, but anyways, times X, okay? And obviously if you multiply by X, it's gonna come out to kilonewtons per meter, right? That's no big, that's a, that's a no brainer, okay? So here you have WX here, right? And so you know what this intensity is. So now all I do is just apply my equilibrium equation. Some of the forces in the Y equal to zero, blah, 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 positive is upwards. And so I would do this, I'd have minus 20 kilonewtons minus N of X plus one half WX times x and that wx times x times one half is the area of this triangle right there okay and all that business equal to zero and then i solve for n of x so i'm going to solve for this right here and this n of x is just uh 20 kilonewtons i'm going to plug in this uh three halves oh minus 20 kilonewtons i'm going to plug in this uh plus i'm going to plug in this three halves so it's three fourths um kilonewton per meter squared times x squared okay you got it right i just i plug this in over here so i got a you know three halves x times x okay equal to zero so here is my um my 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 axial force as a function of the position okay and once i have that then i just substitute sub into the axial force equation equation right here okay right here and that axial force equation delta is equal to zero to l so here is zero all the way down to l so here oops whoa where is it where am i so here is zero all the way down to l okay which in this case is two meters okay let's go back come on go back go back right here and and i i, I substitute this n of x over e a of x times dx this area is constant so i just have an a right here was that area given in this problem shoot oh it is the diameter of 60 millimeters my bad shoot so this diameter is is the diameter of the bar or whatever it is is 60 millimeters okay anyways that's a no brain that's 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 neither here nor there okay and then you just substitute so here this would be zero to l uh, minus 20 kilonewtons plus three fourths kilonewton per meter squared uh, dx all divided by two constants ea right and this is this right here is just two meters that's two, whoa oops oh oh this is getting homeless oh man come on oh i gotta click the pen thing shoot okay all right and then you solve for this delta and then you'll 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 get a, a you know bam this is this will be your answer and i don't need to do the calculus for you right go watch a video on integration what's up all right <laughs> all right so that's it oh it is 10 minutes my time's up but look 
A quick way to remember this equation for the rest of your life, delta equals PL over EA. Think of it as like plie. Or just remember, I told you, like plie, if you're into, like, you know, into ballet or something, right? All right. All right. See ya. I